Y Makers. It's Miss Y from Maker Monday. Today we're going to reuse an oatmeal box and turn it into this colorful art caddy. I like to see all the colors of my markers and I really like having them accessible right here on my desk. Let's get started. Start with your oatmeal box. We don't need the lid anymore. You're gonna need Mod Podge, a flat brush, some craft paint, any kind of scrapbook paper, pattern paper, colorful trims, some bubble wrap, some old magazines, sharpie, scissors, and a ruler, and a brown paper bag. Since I want to store my markers in my caddy, I'm going to measure how tall they are. I want my caddy to be a little shorter than my markers. Five inches looks like about right. I'm going to measure five inches from the bottom of the box to the top. I'll put these short lines here to mark where I'm going to cut my box. Now I'll connect those lines and I can clearly see where I'm going to cut. Here's a little tip. Cut some slices from the top all the way to the line. This will allow you to get your scissors inside and it's much easier for you to cut them out. If it's a little jagged, go ahead and cut so it's nice and straight. If it's not perfect, that's a-okay. Yeah, that looks good. Next, decide what kind of paper you're going to put on your caddy. Do you want a pattern? Do you like stripes? What color combinations do you like? Look through everything you have and find the colors that you love. Start with your brown paper bag. We're going to create a piece that will fit around this oatmeal box perfectly. Then everything else will be glued or painted onto this brown paper bag. Wrap it around, cut it down, Make sure to give it a little bit extra so that it can wrap all the way around. I'm gonna cut the jagged edges of this paper bag so it's nice and straight. Out of all of those papers, I like this one the best. I'm going to glue this onto my brown paper bag, but I'll make sure it's the right size first. Open up your Mod Podge, get a little cup of water, and your flat paintbrush. It helps to have a paper towel too. Dab off the extra water, and let's add some Mod Podge to one side. Using a flat brush helps the Mod Podge go on evenly. Be sure to get the corners and the edges. Place my scrapbook paper on top, press it down, now I have my very first layer. Next comes the paint. I'm gonna start with some pink, wash off my brush, and my plan is to do just a little bit of brush strokes here and there. I don't want to cover up the whole patterned paper, I just want to add a little extra color. Another favorite color of mine is yellow. I'm just putting color down wherever it feels good. I love how the yellow glows on this brown paper. I'm gonna go back to some pink and mix them up a little bit and then add some blue. I'm inspired by the colors that are on my scrapbook paper. You are the artist, you get to decide what goes on yours. Next, I'm going to create a dot pattern. I'm going to cut my bubble wrap down to a smaller side, and I can stamp it multiple times. One side is completely flat, the other side is bumpy. That's the side that we want to use. I'm going to add a little purple, clean my brush off, and again, it's really handy to have a flat brush because when we add paint to the bubble wrap, we're gonna go straight across. This way, the paint stays on top of the bumps 
and doesn't go down into the cracks in between. Straight down, press very gently and peel it back. Ooh, let's do that again. Straight down, press gently and peel it back. Make it dry faster with a hair dryer. Let's create another layer with bubble wrap. Wipe off the bubble wrap, clean your brush. This time I'm using white. Same thing as before. Straight down, press gently and peel it back. Straight down, press gently and peel it back. I feel like I'm ready for some finer details. I have a smaller brush that's kind of pointed and I'm going to create these little clusters of lines using black. A cluster over here and a cluster over there and some little tiny dots. Now's a good time to clean your water. Okay, I'm gonna look through some of my art magazines. Here's an inspiring artist that I love to read about. I'm gonna cut out her picture her name is Dale Bennett and she lives in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm gonna put her picture right there. I'm gonna clean my brush, dry it off a little bit, add some Mod Podge to the back, add an even layer of Mod Podge to the back, then place the picture on top of the background. If you've never used Mod Podge before, it feels a little bit weird painting on top of a picture but trust me, it'll dry clear. Be sure to get underneath and in those little corners so that it lies flat. Smooth it out all the way across. And remember, it does dry clear. Let's find some other pieces to add to this collage. I love her quote, make, inspire, and share. She and I even love the same colors. One more time, clean your brush dab off the extra water, add a thin layer of Mod Podge to the back, and place it where you want it to go. Add some more Mod Podge on top to seal it down. I'm finding all kinds of pictures and drawings to add to my collage. Cut them out, place them down, and cover them up with Mod Podge. Here's an idea, cut out a shape. Add Mod Podge to the back with a clean brush and seal it in. Don't let your Mod Podge dry out. You can make it dry faster with a hair dryer. Trim everything down so it's nice and straight and let's see how it looks on our oatmeal box. Carefully wrap your collage around the oatmeal box to make sure it looks good. Now's the last chance you have to add anything or to make any changes. When you're happy with it, add some Mod Podge to the back of your collage. Make sure to get those corners and the edges. Gently place your oatmeal box on top of your collage and wrap it around, keeping it nice and even. Pull it a little bit tight so that there's no wrinkles. That looks amazing. Add some Mod Podge in the back and seal it down. Trim it with your scissors if you need to. We're gonna need to let this dry completely before the next step. I like to use a binder clip to make sure it stays in place while it's drying. When it's completely dry, pull off the clip and take a look. Let's start thinking about any extra trims or extra details to add. Ribbon, pom-pom, rack, tassels. I'm really happy with this little itty bitty pom-pom trim. I like how it looks on the top. I'm gonna wrap mine around, make sure that I cut it long enough to go all the way and I'm going to use Mod Podge to add it on to the top. Glob it on along the rim, place it down carefully exactly where you want it to go, and these little binder clips will help keep it in place while it's drying. I'm gonna put more binder clips all the way around. 
add a glob of Mod Podge. Don't be shy. Carefully place the trim in the Mod Podge and make sure it goes all the way around. Clip it so it stays. Now something else you could do is use a hot glue gun with a grown-up's help. Beautiful. Good job, makers. There's so many things that you could put on your box. Maybe you could write your name or draw a picture. You could type it out and print it, then cut it out and glue it onto your box. You could use glitter, stickers, anything at all. Make sure you like this video and subscribe so you get to do a new DIY project every Monday. See you next time.